Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about Z fighting. So, Z fighting is that situation, that flicker you get in SketchUp sometimes when two parallel surfaces or near parallel surfaces are so close together that the computer is not quite sure which one to draw first. And what ends up happening is as you rotate, it'll jump and show one versus the other, and it'll go back and forth real quick, and it can create uh, a flicker effect on some materials, which we'll take a look at. And the other thing is it can cause is bleed through. This is where edges that should be behind surfaces start showing up and peeking through the surface, and they shouldn't. Um, it's unfortunately, one of those things that the, the, the system we use, OpenGL, does that in certain situations. Um, so it's, it's not really easy to eliminate, but it is pretty easy to take care of and fix if you run the problem. So I have a couple thoughts I wanted to share with you on how to modify your models to prevent bleed through. Let's hop in and take a look at them right now. Okay, so I have two samples here. Um, Oh, you can already see one doing his thing. Look at that. Look at that flicker. Okay, so this is the first issue I was talking about. Right here, this is something that the first time somebody does something, they'll get this. They'll, they'll be doing this with a basic model and not understand what's going on, think something's wrong, worry about replacing their monitor or their video card. Not a big deal. The issue here is we have two pieces on top of each other. So right here, I have this face, I'm just going to slide it over like this. I'm going to slide it over exactly 20 feet so I can slide it back real easy. And you can see there, here's the carpet I put on there. And here in this, this group right here, I have on the walls tag, I have a face down here too. So these two faces are in the exact same place. That's the issue. So I'm going to here, I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to look at one of the solutions, which might be to grab this face and scoot it up. I don't know, we'll go like half an inch. All right, there we go. Look at that. That looks perfect. Now, obviously, if I come in and build an interior wall inside this carpet, it's going to be a half inch wrong, so it's going to be an issue. If I get back really, really far, eventually I might have another flicker happening there, but for, for this particular model, that works pretty good. It's not ideal. It is not ideal to have, uh, you know, this be wrong. The, the carpet should be on the ground and not floating above it. So it's not the perfect solution. Let's talk about perfect or, or closer to perfect solutions. Unless there is a reason, it probably doesn't make sense to have two faces right here. So this is the next thing I would suggest is either going into this group completely deleting that extra face and just leaving the carpet down there or take this carpet material and apply it directly to the floor inside. I know some people like to have, you know, different groups of different levels of construction and that's fine. That works. In that case, you know, you'll have to, to work around that. But if it's something as simple as this, why not put the carpet just on the floor geometry? That's pretty simple. Or if the floor is separate, put the floor in one group and put the walls in a different group and don't have that extra piece. So that generally speaking, when we see that issue, it's because people are putting extra geometry up because they want their, I don't know, their wallpaper to be in a separate group from their exterior wall or something like that. That's fine, but you will have that unless you turn one of the two off. Speaking of turning it off, that's potentially our solution to this next issue. So right here in this model, oh, you already see it happening, sneak preview. I have uh, some truss framing, and then I have some sheathing on top. The, everything's in its own group here too. So I have so you know, walls group, a sheathing group, and then a trusses group. So if this is a situation you're in where you're modeling this, you're probably going to, anytime you model framing, if you zoom back far enough, you're gonna end up with this. So this is not a single face like I saw over here. If I look at this, this, this group, I'm just gonna go ahead and edit it to isolate it, is actually, it's not broken into sheets, but it's actually the full width of the sheathing. So it's not like I'm cutting corners and just drawing a single sheet on here. The farther I get back, the closer the relative distance between this front face and the top of the trusses becomes. 
and it ends up causing that bleed through I was talking about. So they show up. So there's a couple things we can do here. One thing is we can modify our style. So in styles, if I go to edges and turn profiles off, um, that can sometimes, depending on the thickness, fix the problem. So you can see here in my close up rotating, just turning that off made it a little better. I have to get back a little further to make it bleed through. That can help because profiles create heavier line widths. So you see that? There we go. There's a perfect example. See how that almost goes away? And it shows up real easy here. Profiles draw thicker lines. Thicker lines bleed through easier than thin lines. It's also a performance thing. I mean, generally speaking, I like to model with profiles turned off because it's less demand on my computer to figure out where the profiles are. So I end up being able to orbit and move around faster with profiles turned off. It is possible to still get bleed through with profiles turned off. You can see right here. So there's a couple things I can do. Depending on the model, if I'm in a situation where you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to look at it in a, in a spot where I can't see the trusses anyhow. I might be able to just come and take, turn my framing off and that might be good enough. Now, this is insanely basic, right? If I was going to put in sheathing, I would probably put in fascia and sheathe my gables and all that kind of stuff where I would actually cover up where all the trusses were, causing more bleed through, but making it more sense to turn the trusses off once they're fully closed in. So in a lot of cases, if you're not actually looking, actively looking at the framing in a view, turning it off might be a good way to get rid of that bleed through. Now, in some situations, like maybe this is what, I'm, maybe I'm trying to illustrate something about the sheathing on top of the framing, so I do need to see both. There's a couple things you can do to get creative with this. Um, so like I said, the issue is that the lines that are the top of the trusses are bleeding through. I'm gonna just, fair warning, trigger alert, I'm going to go through and do that trainer thing where I do it in difficult ways that don't seem good first before we come to the final solution. Because it's possible one of these intermediate solutions will work for your specific uh, issue that you're running into. All right, to isolate a truss, I'm going to double click. They are components, so I only have to change one truss, which, I mean, if you can find a better example of geometry, it should be a component than a truss or a floor member, uh, you know, this is what components are made for, it feels like. So one of the things I can do is I can actually turn off these top edges. So if I click, double click on the top surface, then I'm going to shift click the surface. That gives me just the four lines that make it. I could just come in right now and I can turn off visibility, turn off to hide it. And then doing that prevents bleed through because the, whoop, something still bled through there. Did I leave something? Oh, I still have hidden geometry turned on. All right, so if I turn turn off hidden geometry, the dashed lines go away, and now they can't bleed through because they're not there anymore. This works great until you do something like this. Now, it looks awkward, right? Because all the rest of the lines, all the edges are showing except for some reason, these ones right here. Not ideal. Um, if I'm in a situation where I have to do a lot of, if, if if this is a one-time thing, right? So I got a shot of this, and then after that, I just work with trusses, then that that's a quick and easy way to turn that off. If I'm in a model where I'm gonna have to constantly be turning this on and off, or maybe I'm creating layout files and I have half the, half the views are trusses with sheathing on and the other half are just trusses, then I'm gonna wanna come up with a solution where I can toggle those edges on and off real quick. And fortunately, it's actually pretty easy. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna grab this rectangle right here, I'm going to, but here, let's, let's, there's a couple ways I do this. I'm gonna actually undo a couple times. Get my edges back where they were. All right, now I'm going to double click on the face. I'm gonna make it a group. Okay, now it's in its own group. I'm gonna take that group and put it onto a new tag. I'm just gonna call this trust top. Maybe I'll even spell truss right. There we go. So I put that onto truss tops. Now, what I can do is as I come out here, if I start to get bleed through, I just turn those, turn those guys off. Whoops, I didn't finish the process. Um, <laughs> I got ahead of myself. I got excited to show you what I did. So I turn truss tops 
on and off now, and they'll go away. I didn't fix the problem because the edges are still here as part of those other pieces. So what I'm gonna do with truss tops turn off, I'm real quick, close that. And then I'm just going to erase those edge lines once again. I'm actually erasing extra. I don't need to erase the edge, these edges because they actually hit the edge of the sheathing. These two are the only ones that really matter. But now with that, again, if I start to get bleed through, I can turn truss tops off and they look great. Turn sheathing off, bring my truss tops back. I got closed in geometry. So I know I, I, this is a pretty simple. I had one truss as a bunch of trusses would be more work, but depending on how much work you're doing with trying to make this all work with, uh, with your geometry where you're flipping through scenes and making these, this might be worthwhile. It might be quick and easy enough to actually set something like that up so you turn it off. And the nice thing is because these are different tags, I could actually create scenes real quickly connected to the visibility tags to turn those bleed through items off by switching scenes, which is great for working working scenes or actual final scenes that you want to take into layout or something like that to get rid of that bleed through. So hopefully if you if you didn't have an understanding of what Z fighting was that explained it. And if you've seen Z fighting and fought with Z fighting before, pun intended, uh, hopefully you like that and it, it gave you a, some options to work with. Like I said, some of those seem like there may be a lot of work. Some of them are pretty easy depending on your job, but those are options. Understanding what Z fighting is and why it happens is kind of essential. Once you know that, the solutions are fairly easy to, to put in place. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos around here every single week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment. Let me know what you think of this solution. Do you have a better way to combat Z fighting? We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.